Hi, thanks for tuning in to my VR Integrator how-to series. In today's video, we're going to talk about the motion controller and the options that are available to you. So let's look at the Blueprints folder in our pack. And we'll notice that we have several of these motion controllers, which is the pointed motion controller, the Jedi, a uh, hands Jedi, hands left, which is pretty much the same thing, and then the pointer motion controller plus the UI motion controller. So if we open those up and go into the uh, class defaults and type in options, that's what we're going to talk about today, options. So basically what we have in the uh, motion controller for the UI is enable haptics. So when you move your radial menu around, uh, you'll feel the, uh, the vibration of that um, arrow moving once you move your thumbstick. So that controls that uh, specific uh, action. We'll go ahead and go to the... Uh, pointer. Well, actually, we're going to jump ahead because a lot of these are pretty much the same thing if we type in look at here. Some of them do vary a little bit, so you'll want to definitely uh, look at each one of them. There's the, uh, the laser pointer, and here's the uh, the basic hands. And then what we want to start with is the Jedi hands because that has pretty much all the options. All right, I'll go ahead and type in options to filter the things we want to see. And what you'll notice here uh, is our tooltips. And all every one of these, I do have a tooltip. And same thing over here on this uh, panel. I try to be descriptive, but short and sweet. So you can definitely read that up. I'll go over this quickly. So the laser telepoint is the, uh, the farthest way you can teleport, basically for the straight line teleports. The number of spline points is the number of segments that will be divided up inside of your, uh, your spline itself. It could be the straight spline or the arc spline. The more segments you have, the better it looks for uh, round, rounded curves. So basically like the arc teleport. Uh, the, there is a cost to it though, as you get higher and higher. Uh, I, I do, I have tested this up to, you can go up to 64, 128. There is an associate cost with each of the splines that has to be drawn for VR, so you really don't want to keep that very high. Uh, 16 is pretty good. You can change that according to your own style. Uh, then the uh, next thing is the 3D teleport distance. So basically, this is whenever we are uh, teleporting uh, with the Z axis. This is how far out you start when you first start to teleport instead of your max or your right up to you. This starts at 300 units, uh, unreal units in front of you, and from there you can. Uh, go in and out of that uh, and then the other thing is um so these are those are more of a settings these are the types of modes that out allow 3d teleport that actually gives you the ability to, to teleport up in the uh the air um and then um is arc teleporter this is the the style of teleporting this is actually the arc instead of the straight line and then the other one is teleporter nav mesh this locks to where you have to hit the nav mesh to uh, teleport at that distance uh, and then um, the arc teleport launch power shows you how far it can jump into um, that that uh, that arc calculation. So it's not directly related. It's not a direct distance ratio, but basically it's indirectly the distance to how far it goes. So it's the power to launch you up. So the higher power on your arc will carry you farther. Um, so that's where you would set that to go farther. You can put a higher power for lower or closer to you put a lower lower power. So that's something to play with there. Um, and then the enable haptics, uh, that's something that, you know, the sensory feedback you get, something as a radio menu, you'll get that for hitting something, uh, for dragging something, for picking something up. You'll get those sensory um, uh, notifications in your hand. Uh, snap to hands max distance. So this basically is how far the sword has to travel back uh, to your hand before it snaps back into the socket. You can play with that depending on uh, how, how far you want that to interpolate in and out and how long you want to spend time on that. So those are definitely some, some values to play around with. Is Jedi ability active? That's basically you can turn off the Jedi ability. You actually have to go and get close enough to it and then uh, pick it up. But if you turn that off, you'll want it to uh, change the snap to hands max distance, probably a little higher, probably to like uh, 10 or 15 because you'll want to have a bigger bubble around your hand when you go down and reach it to snap into place. So that's something to be aware of. And then the pull speed pretty uh, explanatory is how fast it will interpolate from the place where it's at to your hand. Uh, the search radius is basically is a, the, the search bubble. So basically how big of an area are you scanning when you put your hand out? Uh, and then the pull distance max is how far out can you your ability be used? So if you put 500, you can get things 500 units away from you. You can pull those things into you and they'll light up with their outline. Um, so if you're if it's too far away, it won't light up. But if it's within your um, range, your hand will will turn into a different animation, and it will turn the outline on the object to be grabbed. All right, and then the last option here is can teleport and grab. Yes, uh, this is something. Uh, if you want to be able to hold swords in your hands or any object in your hand and still teleport, this is an option you can turn on and do that. Uh, or you can make it where you can't teleport when your hands are full. So that's up to your own game project. 
All right, so that was a quick overview of the options. I do want to go over a little bit more on the teleport, but before I do that, I want to show you over here, this is filtered. If you come over here to the variables, this is where we can have, I have all the other variables. Um, these are the main ones that you probably want to have options to change the most people probably want to do. But if you want to go more in depth, uh, I pulled out the select few from the, uh, other categories well we have the laser pointer category we have the smoothing category where you can set the uh the filtering algorithm the, uh, the cutoff slopes basically I'm, I'm using um some low pass filters to do some of this so you can change the variables of those low pass uh, filters and then um this uh, resampling arc points is something uh, that's going to be obsoleted because now i resample everything because that's much more performant so we don't want to ever turn that off for vr for vr Unless you just want to have burn some frames because you got extra. That's okay. Teleporter. Uh, so there's all the other things to do with teleporter. And then the uh, input hands. Some more things with hands. The dragging. As you can see, there's there's a ton of things over here. So uh, there's more advanced options in here, but these are the main ones to focus on. Uh, when we go back to this 3D teleport, now one thing you don't want to do is have the 3D teleport and the arc teleporter on the same time because it doesn't handle... Uh, partial arc teleportation up into the air at this point. Uh, it will land on top of objects without the, the uh, 3D teleport. So I want to show off the teleport option and then I want to show you off the, the nav mesh too. So if we click on that and go back to the uh, minimap hit P, we can sit there and see the nav mesh and see that we would not be able to uh, teleport on these areas over here if we weren't, you know, if we had that checked on. Except for the, you know, Z. 3D teleport because that's up in the air. It doesn't need a mesh for that. So I'll go ahead and make that requirement off. And we'll go ahead and I do want to show off the um, uh, turn off the arc teleporter and allow 3D teleport and start that up and show you what that looks like here. All right, now we're in the game and here we have both our hands. I'll go ahead and as soon as I click on the teleport, the distance at where it comes at is right there. That's the 300 units. And uh, it stays there as long as I halfway push the uh, thumbstick. And if I push the thumbstick uh, farther out, it goes farther out. If I push it farther in, it comes farther in. So you can drive it up and down the line by pushing the thumbstick forward and back. Now, that's only if you push to the extreme of the thumbstick. If you go from uh, touching to mid-range, it just lights up. And then you can still rotate it in the direction that you want. So we can go ahead and not move and look at any direction we want and look backwards. If you pull too hard, it will pull back on that. That's definitely some things you can be adjusted in more advanced options. And as you move around, I can go ahead and be... Uh, it's, it's, once you learn the technique, it's pretty cool to move around like this. But anyways, you can sit there and move anywhere you want. You can get, you get good at moving that in and out to where you want to be at and then teleport that way. So here's the here's how we use those 3D teleport options. It's um, It takes a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, it moves around really nice. You can sit there and kind of look like a spaceship moving wherever you want to go to and then turn around this way. And there we have it. All right, so that's those options. And if you have any questions, um, we'll talk more about customizing your meshes uh, in a different uh, video. Uh, again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Bye.